Hey everybody, Mike here. During the Starlink private beta, SpaceX requires that you keep your Starlink dish at the registered service address. That got me wondering, can SpaceX track the location of the Starlink dishes when they're running? And then what are they going to do with that information if they can? In this video, I'm going to look into three questions. The first, can Elon Musk track you? The second, can the US government track you? And the third, can other governments or other individuals track you while you're using the Starlink service? Coming up. I did a video a little while ago on overall threats to the Starlink system and to people using the Starlink system. In this video, I'm going a bit deeper on all of the threats around location and tracking information. This really came up from a lot of comments in my other videos, where people are concerned that their local government might not authorize Starlink to operate in their country. And that usually brought up some discussion on whether or not you'd be able to take a dish from somewhere else and smuggle it into that country and use Starlink there. And really this comes down to how Starlink uses your location information. One, if they report or track where you are. And two, if you're someplace that they're not authorized to serve you, are they going to actually cut off access to that terminal or allow it to continue to run? In order to work properly, the Starlink user terminal, the Starlink dish, needs to know where it is on Earth, and it needs to know its orientation, which way is which. And the reason it needs this is because it is a steerable antenna. So the dish is going to physically orient itself in an optimal position, and then from that point on, it's going to use an electronically steerable beam to track the Starlink satellites as they travel through space. But in order to do that tracking, it needs to know where the satellites are in relation to where it is on Earth so it can point the beam in the right direction to hit the satellite. The way these passes work is the satellites might be crossing over your location from multiple directions and in multiple orientations. So you have to know where you are and where the satellites are coming in order to know where to point that beam. So in the end, the user terminal, the Starlink dish, does need to know fairly accurate location information in order for the system to work. Now, strictly speaking, it does not need to report that information back to SpaceX, but practically speaking, it probably will. SpaceX will want to know that location information so it can better plan coverage and also understand where their customers are uh, so they know where to allocate the most bandwidth. Now, the big question is, will they also use that location information to turn the system on and off if somebody is trying to use it in a region where they don't have permission from the local government? My personal feeling is that initially, they will absolutely shut the system off if they're in an area where they're not allowed to operate. During this initial rollout, SpaceX is going to want to get the most cooperation from governments around the world to try to get this coverage in as many places as possible. Now, later, as the system is more mature, we might come across cases where the US government, say the State Department, is actually backing up SpaceX to say, yes, actually allow coverage to operate in this country because one, either the US government wants to use it there, or two, potentially it's in the US foreign policy interests to allow internet to operate in that country even though the local government doesn't want it to. And with the US government support, SpaceX can be a little bit more confident that their satellites aren't going to get blown out of the sky because they're offering service to some areas like this. So two more questions up. Can the US government track you? And can other governments track you? 
If you like digging into this level of detail with Starlink and hearing all the latest updates about Starlink, definitely subscribe down below and hit the bell icon to get notified of all my latest videos as soon as I post them. So, will the US government be able to track you while you're using Starlink? Now you might ask, does it really matter if I just have Starlink at my house? The government already knows where I live. Uh, what's the big deal? But I know from comments on previous videos, a lot of people are really interested in using Starlink for mobile applications, things like RVs or traveling. And also people are interested in using Starlink for off-grid activities like overlanding or hiking or, you know, like cabins in the woods, maybe even bunkers, who knows. And for these more mobile use cases, you might not want the government or, or potentially anyone else actually knowing where you are and where you're traveling while you're using the Starlink service. So when you look at the government tracking, it really comes down to the law. Any communications provider operating in the United States, whether it's telephone or internet, is covered and bound by CALEA, the Communications Assistance for Law Enforcement Act. And what this act does, it's a law that requires telecommunication companies to provide a mechanism for lawful interception of communications or of metadata on communications. And typically, this requires a warrant issued by a judge. Now, the location information in particular was in a bit of a gray area. For a long time, this was very state specific and really depended on where you were uh, to know what actual protections you had on your location information. Now, this was cleared up a little bit in 2018 with uh, what's viewed as a landmark decision by the Supreme Court of the United States called a Carpenter ruling on a case Carpenter versus the United States. And what the Supreme Court found was that cell phone location information, because you carry your cell phone with you pretty much all the time, the, the location of that cell phone over time really reveals so much information about your lifestyle, your habits, your way of life, that it really starts to violate the Fourth Amendment rights on, on kind of protection from invasion of privacy. And in that ruling, they basically said that cell phone location information does require a warrant in the whole United States in order to obtain this from a telecommunication provider. Now, that ruling is specifically addressing cell phone location information. So chances are, for location information on something like Starlink, you probably would not be able to use the same precedent from that case to kind of require law enforcement to give a warrant. So there's a good chance that police would be able to get location information from the Starlink system without actually needing a warrant, even with the Carpenter ruling uh, kind of laid down in precedent. So for the US, with a warrant, definitely your location information can be obtained by the US government. And probably, even without a warrant, law enforcement is going to be able to request that location information from Starlink, um, given that it's not necessarily personal information in the same way that your cell phone location information is. So what about other governments? If you're just living outside of the US and using Starlink, like me here in Canada, or if you're living in the UK, and you wanna know if your own government can get location information on you, chances are they can. In order to get authority to operate in your country, likely, Starlink will be bound as a telecommunications provider in your country, and likely there will be similar legislation like CALEA in the US or RIPA in the United Kingdom, the Regulation of Investig Investigatory Powers Act, uh, or similar legislation in your country that gives your government the ability to intercept or access location information from the Starlink service.
Some countries have also gone far enough, like Russia, to say that any system like Starlink that's operating in their country must provide a local ground station within that country where all the communications are routed through. This clearly enables um, kind of easy bulk surveillance just by tapping all of the data coming in and out of that ground station and potentially opens up avenues where even if Starlink is not cooperating, that that country may be able to get access in bulk without any judicial oversight to definitely the communications itself and with some clever tricks, potentially all of the location information that they might want without actually having any cooperation from Starlink. So one possible technique that an adversary like the Russian government or really anyone with access to the, the raw traffic as it leaves a ground station, a technique they might be able to use is based on the timing of the switches from one satellite to the next. So what it looks like is, imagine you've got a user. Now, what we're doing here is we're looking from the top down. So we've got a user with their Starlink dish and it's pointed straight up. And maybe it's talking to a Starlink satellite here that has a coverage area, a big circle on Earth. And as the satellite is moving, you've got a second satellite that's coming within range. And it has a big coverage area. And at some point, the Starlink dish is going to switch from that satellite and it's going to switch over to the new satellite. And during that transition, there could be a slight blip in the traffic. So that for that split millisecond when the signal cuts over from one satellite to the next, there's going to be a slight disruption or change in the traffic. Now, if you're the Russian government and say you're over here at a ground station and you have access to look at all of that raw traffic, then you might be able to observe those blips in the, the packets. So whether that's an actual data change, like something like a, a TTL field changing, or a public IP address changing, or some routing information changing, or if it's just purely the timing data. So you're streaming a video, and at that moment there's a slight gap your ping time, your latency increases ever so slightly. And if that's measurable at this interception point, then all that the adversary has to do is keep watching and tracking when those blips occur. And then using the public location information for all of these satellites to keep track of where the edge of coverage is for each one of these satellites every time a blip occurs. And with enough data over enough time, you're going to have these blips from different satellites at different times are going to continue to narrow down the location of that target until you've got a very small area where that signal could be that corresponds with all of those blips. And this is a technique that doesn't require any cooperation from Starlink. It's all based on the public location information of the satellites and the ability to intercept traffic on the internet coming out of a ground station. And for governments or even other third parties, there's still kind of like the old fashioned way of maybe just flying around in an airplane and monitoring for any signals in the KU band and then using radio direction finding to actually zero in on where your Starlink user terminal is. 
That doesn't require any cooperation from Starlink and is pretty accessible technology for, for lots of people. So overall, my assessment is if you want to go off-grid with a secret bunker or a cabin in the woods, don't rely on Starlink to keep your location information secret. Let me know in the comments if you're interested in mobile uses of Starlink, either RVs or overlanding or hiking. I'd love to know what you're thinking of using it for and if you're concerned with that tracking or location information being shared with governments or other parties. If you're getting value from these videos, hit the like button down below. It really helps the channel grow. All right, everyone. Thank you for watching. See you next time.